You know what I hate about movies like this? What? If I saved this until January when we did the Gauntlet of Garbage, this video would get double the number of views that it's going to get now. Because <laughs> people love to see me talk about bad movies. <laughs> and believe me, this is a bad movie. You should just make a playlist that says Rage or I something. I probably should do that. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. A rage uh, playlist. <laughs> I do not want to go down that memory lane. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me, Aaron. I'm Michelle. And this is our post you got reaction for Head of the Class. I mean, uh, <laughs> Live at the Party. Was that the name of the Rodney Dangerfield movie that this is totally just ripping off? I don't, I think it, I don't remember. Like, like... <laughs> it's been forever since I saw that. I've forgotten, but oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey, so, anyway, focus me. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about this. I can tell. This movie, yes, dear God. Oh, that movie pass is paying off. <laughs> this is a movie about Melissa McCarthy, who her daughter is in her senior year of college, and Melissa McCarthy, she got pregnant with her when she was in college, and she had to drop out when she only had one year left, and this thing opens up with her, like, in the car with her husband and they're like driving away from dropping her daughter off at college and they're driving away they get to like the end of the driveway like the dorm is still there you can still see people in the background and the, and the husband just goes i want to get a divorce and like they just start talking there it's like yeah so i met someone else and then it turns out it's a real estate agent who's kind of like well known um yeah <laughs> And just like, oh my god, okay, sorry if I can't like explain this very well, but it wasn't until this exact moment, as I told you this plot, that I realized, oh my god, I'm going to sum up this entire story in two minutes. <laughs> oh my god, typically these entire videos are just me telling the story and all the problems beat for beat for beat. Oh my god, it just hit me. I don't have to do that on this one, because I can't do that on this one. They get divorced, she gets really upset, she decides she's going to go back to college, she instantly goes back to college, stuff then at the end of this she graduates oh that's the fucking oh my god okay you could literally cut an hour out of this movie and it would not affect the story because a there's really like no conflict or anything in this film at all for a massive chunk of it like it isn't until like act three when all of a sudden uh it's it comes into play that her ex-husband is still paying for her to go to college, but after she gets high because she ate some pot chocolate, <laughs> she goes, because that's a thing that, that you do in comedies like this, <laughs> after she gets high, after eating some pot chocolate, she goes to her ex-husband's wedding, which they skip over the divorce quick. There's one scene of them talking about the divorce with a lawyer. And then that's apparently it. You get no sense of time in this thing. Because <laughs> apparently she goes through an entire semester at school very easily. And it's never really brought up like any of the concerns that would come along with that. This is the most magical college I have ever seen in a movie. <laughs> Literally, the way that she gets into this college is after she decides she's going to do it, it then cuts to her like in someone's office. It goes, okay, here's your itinerary. Wow, I can't believe it. Yeah. It was like, good luck out there. It was like, I don't remember college being like that. <laughs> is this movie set in Canada where they have free tuition? Like, <laughs> is this where? Oh my God. By the way, I don't even know if that's true in Canada. I know that a lot of European countries do have it, but it's like, yeah, isn't that a thing in Canada where some sections of Canada like college? I don't know. Whatever. <coughs> Canada's better than us, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's, it just starts off with that. It's like, that's all it took to go to college? And apparently she only has one class. Like, she needed a whole other year in order to graduate. Which is the other thing. She's dropping her daughter off at the beginning of senior year. Not like senior semester, senior year. So this goes from August to spring. And it feels like three weeks. Like, does, Max. She, does she go to the same college as her daughter? Yes. Oh, so do they have same classes together? No. Because oh. she only has one class, apparently. She might have a class with her. We only ever see her in one class. And when she goes to the class, she recognizes the teacher as someone who she used to study with back when she went to this school. Back when it was her when she was uh, in school here. Uh, she was like, oh, I know that guy. I know him. And you kind of get the sense that, like, maybe they're going to have, like, a romantic thing. It's like, oh, yeah, like, her husband treated her like crap, didn't believe in any of the things that she wanted to do. But this guy, they used to have, like, friendship. Okay, maybe they'll come back in. They forget she has class at college <laughs> for so long in this movie when 
she eventually finally goes back to that class and he pops up again. I was like, oh yeah, I thought you were going to be part of this story. <laughs> Guess not. Uh, she does have some kind of a romantic interest in here though, because she starts uh, like just having a fling with this hunky, good looking guy from a fraternity. And like they just start hooking up and just start like banging nonstop. Like that's all they do. They just have sex constantly. And the f after the first time that she has sex, he comes up to her like the next day and she's like, hey, so did you get any of my texts? And he goes, oh, I put it on. So I was like, oh yeah, I understand. Okay. And then he, she looks at it, like, wow, that's a lot of texts. And she's just scrolling. And you see just a wall of text in there. And like, I miss you so much. And it didn't really hit me until I'm saying this right now. She said that she didn't see his text and it just hit me. There were replies in the text string she was going through. Oh. What's the deal, movie? <laughs> Wow! Okay, I didn't. I was so fucking like out of it in this film. I just <laughs> didn't care. I did not even catch that. But there's many things like that in this film. Oh, like no. there is. Like she makes a Harry Potter joke, and then later on, someone references Dumbledore, and she goes, "I don't know who that is." And I was like, "But you made a Harry Potter joke earlier in the." Doesn't it feel like a quick sweep of the script? Will like someone will spot that? Or there's another line in here in which a girl. Uh, gets told, oh, there's cake upstairs, and she goes right, ooh, cake, and then she goes, she's, she's allergic, honey, you're allergic, no, and then later on, when she's wrecking her husband's wedding, uh, that same girl is walking out there at the end and goes, you had a really nice cake, by the way, and I was like, weren't you allergic? <laughs> Wasn't that like an actual thing that you had earlier in the film? I was like, there's so many things like that in this movie. Um, I'm just imagining, like, Jumanji where he explodes from the cake. Yes! Like, <laughs> I thought the same thing! God damn it! Now that would have been funny. Something in this movie had to be funny. Uh, I will get to the jokes in just a second. But yeah, she starts hooking up with this guy, and like I said, first thing that happens is the day after, walls and walls of, and it's like, I was trying to scan what he was saying, and there's some moments in there in which you, I can make out things like, I'm missing you, where are you, like, very stalker level shit. Yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, listen, this just, it isn't healthy, and we need to make better choices here. And then they immediately go and bang, mm. and then they just keep banging all throughout this. And I was like, all right, when's the, when's the other shoe going to drop, and he's going to turn into the crazy stalker? When's, when's this going to turn into Melissa McCarthy in that Mark Wahlberg movie? What was that one? Fame? No, wait, not fame. <laughs> it was some fear. That was it. Yeah, when's this going to turn into Melissa McCarthy in fear? Because clearly he's going to be a stalker. No. Never really comes up. Like, they set up a massive creepy stalker joke there in the beginning. Never really come back to that. Like, it sounds like the char none of the characters, like, mature or grow. Because, <laughs> 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 like, gee, you think, like, going to college, you will, like, learn stuff, but of course not. Like, <laughs> you would learn to become a better person, but of course not. Hold on, I need to, I need to actually think about this, because... I think you just hit the nail on the head. I'm going, no, he, that person didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. It's like, okay, did the daughter learn to respect the mom? And it's like, okay, well, I didn't want you at school with me, mom, but you know what? I learned that you're pretty cool. The daughter, yeah, she doesn't want the mom there, but she's like, okay, mom, you just, uh, they, don't, they don't need to hear all this, mom. It's, you, you, can, you can go now, mom. But it's like, but then that night she'll be like, hey, we're going to that party. You want to come with us? Mom's like, she is very okay with the mom being in the school. Just every now and then she's like, okay, mom, not, not, not now, mom. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, but that's the most you get out of her. The rest of the time she is full on like, yeah, hey, my mom, everybody, yeah. So she doesn't change at all during this. Music McCarthy's lesson is, like, the lesson she has is that at the beginning of this movie she needs to learn to stand up for herself. She learns that as soon as she decides to go to college. There's no more progression on her character after that point. Wow! <laughs> it really did just hit me. No one progresses after the 15 minute mark in this movie. Which, by the way, that's something I gotta point out. This thing is like an hour and 40 minutes long. As I said, you can remove an hour from this movie. And one of the reasons why is because every scene drags so long. And I remember when it got to the point when she was finally at the school, and finally there, and with her daughter, and in the dorm, and all these things. I went, all right, this, this isn't this isn't good, but it's, it's not as bad as some of the reviews I heard. It's It'll pass by, it'll be over with in no time. I mean, she's at the school right now. It's gotta be what, like, that's the end of Act 1, typical Act 1, 30 minutes. We're clearly 30 minutes in this thing. 15 minutes? 
Like, I, I checked my phone so many times wow. in this movie. I was constantly checking it going, oh god, only 10 minutes have passed since the last time I checked it. This thing just goes on and on. And the reason why is because there's no fucking script to this thing. Mm. There's notes for what people should say in a scene, but so much of every single scene is just Melissa McCarthy continuously talking. And that's supposed to be funny. And it's not like there are even jokes involved in there. At all. Like, so much, like when she gets to, when she gets to her class, her one class that she takes. Her, her one class. Her archaeology class, because that's what she wanted her major in. When she goes in there, it starts off with her talking to a bunch of the other girls in her daughter's sorority. And like, who wants to be in archaeology? Like you? No, no. I think, I thought I heard someone say they wanted to be in archaeology. Is it, is it you? You, honey, over there? No, no, not me. Okay, well, what, what about you? Like, this is literally like how every single scene goes. Oh, wow. Like, I mean, I realized this. After she got the bad news from her husband that they were getting the divorce and she goes to her parents and literally a scene is just, honey, why don't I make you something? I don't want anything, mom. Okay, well, you know, I never really trust that, Ted. You know what? I'm gonna make you a ham sandwich. <laughs> honey, mom, I don't want a ham sandwich. What do you mean you don't want a ham sandwich? Everybody likes ham sandwiches. Dad, you're yelling about ham. I am not yelling about ham. Honey, yes, you are yelling about ham. Fine, I'm yelling about ham. I'm up on the roof talking about ham. I shortened that to half the time it takes up in this film. <laughs> Every goddamn scene is that. Wow. Every scene is just on and on and on. Like when she gets to the class where she's, her archeology span class, the scene is, oh, hey, I'm gonna sit next to you. Oh, oh, oh sorry, excuse me. You know, there's always that one person. God, I gotta be the person that sits in the middle. Sorry about that, everybody. It's like, oh, honey, honey, I noticed you dropped your bag there. It fell between the chairs. Here, let me help you that. Oh, you dropped your pencil out there. Here, look. Oh, you know what? That tip, that tip won't do. Here, I got a whole bag of mechanical pencils. That way the lead, the lead just keeps on coming, honey. Just take it out. This is literally, I'm not making this up. I, this is the stuff that she says in the scene. And again, I'm shortening it. It's stretched out, the stuff that I said, and I'm quoting lines that she actually says in here, like beat for beat, but it's stretched out. That is every scene, and it's like, there is no point to any of the things you're saying right now. The only part they would serve would be to be a joke, and I don't know how, honey, you drop your bag between the chairs. Oh, that pencil, no good. Oh, here, take a mechanical pencil. What's the joke in that? I don't understand the joke in that. And every single joke is that. Everything in here is that. Like, the fucking ham joke I told you about is one of the funniest jokes in this entire movie because at least you got, like, somebody, like, yelling the word ham, and it's like, well, I guess that's not things someone would normally yell, so... It's like, yelling ham is funny! Like, yes! <laughs> I guess that's a thing that people wouldn't normally do, so that makes it a joke, kind of, I guess. Ugh. Um, but, yeah, when she gets to the archaeology class, she spies one of the people from the dorm there, and the other characters in here, everyone outside Melissa McCarthy is so forgettable in this movie, I thought it was her daughter. <laughs> and it was not, I swear to God. <laughs> it was not until 45 minutes after that scene, two other whole scenes in that, in that classroom had gone by before I went, that's not her daughter. <laughs> that's Jillian Jacobs from Community. <laughs> An actress I actually know! Like, it's one thing to, like, not be able to recognize the different characters in this movie from each other, but when you actually know one of them and you're a fan of things that they've done, that's a whole other level of who gives a crap about these characters. I swear to you, like, it is not until the start of Act 3 in which I went, Oh my god, I didn't know who you were in every scene you've been in until now. Um... And her whole thing, and you might be thinking, Jillian Jacobs, she's a little bit too old to be in college. I mean, that was actually one of the jokes about her in Community, which came out seven or eight years ago at this point. Uh, that is actually something that comes up in here. They point out that she's older and she says, oh yeah, I was in a coma for eight years. And it's like, oh my goodness, oh wow. And that comes back into play at the end of this. Because at the end of like, this... Like, it all, it's all just a coma? She no. just wakes up? <laughs> no, it was all the... It was all the dream of an autistic stepchild staring into a snow globe. <laughs> that's a reference like five people out there will get. <laughs> oh, ask your parents, kids. That's actually how a television series ended once. 
I would have respected it if it had done something like that because that would have been crazy at least. <laughs> that would have been at least something to make me go, oh, wow. Because there's so much <laughs> of this film that I can't even remember. There is only one joke in this entire movie that got a, huh, out of me. Like, not even a laugh, just like, huh. Like, that's the most I gave in this entire film. And it was early on. And then, like, ten minutes later, I was thinking, oh, my God, none of these jokes are good. Well, at least when I do the review, I'll be able to come in here and talk about the one joke that did kind of get a laugh on me. So that way I can give it some credit. When a bad movie is at least able to get one joke out and one laugh out on me, I like to talk about that to try and praise it in some way. And I was thinking, like, yeah, at least I'll be able to come in here and talk about that one joke where... You don't even remember the joke. It was 10 minutes after the joke and I forgot it. <laughs> the only thing in this entire movie that kind of got a chuckle out of me. I just went, Wait, what? What? Uh, yeah, I totally blanked on it. But no, okay. I was going to talk about how this movie ends, but I'll just, I'll save that for a second. I'm just going to fully wrap up here and say, I will say though, there were people in my audience laughing nonstop. All this stuff that I looked at and went, I don't know how that's a joke. There were people laughing constantly at there was like one little like section way down there in the front left corner where they were laughing continuously throughout well, i kind this. of feel like you'll always have that group of people no matter how bad a comedy you go see i don't know i've seen some comedies where we got nothing on <laughs> I've, i will say i've seen some comedies where it's been <laughs> the entire time that was supposed to be crickets everyone uh so i have seen comedies where no one laughed so it is a thing that happens but yeah there were People down there, there's someone over there. There were two people behind me laughing the whole time. But even then, I would still, well, A, I should also point out, there were other people in there not laughing. There was one moment that fully summed up this audience in which the people behind me laughed real hard at something. Five, four, three, two, one, from over here. <laughs> it's like literally it was that, that much of a gap between ha 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 ha. It was like, wow, yep, that's the audience for this right now. Um, but I will say, even the audience who was laughing at this, there's the all is lost moment when uh, she gets told, hey, your ex-husband is no longer paying for your college, which is really the first time that that, it gets brought mm -hmm. up like once before that. But I mean, like, yeah, this movie goes an hour before they actually explain how the hell she is actually affording college, even though they constantly bring up how much college cost. Uh, so, they, um... What was I gonna say? Fuck. Alright, I'm brain dead from this thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it comes to that moment in which she just decides, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I, I'm gonna quit college. So she goes to her daughter, her daughter who was mad at her for wrecking her dad's wedding, which I should point out, this is the only time we have ever seen any emotions from the daughter regarding the father at all in mm. this. Because as when she goes and tells her daughter they're getting a divorce, it's just, oh, are you okay, mom? And I was like, don't get me wrong, support him, support him daughter. That's good. That's yeah. Good. That's good. But and it's like, yeah, you know, he's dating this other person. Dad's an ass. Like, that's all she says. And then every other time that the divorce is brought, I was like, mom, are you okay? Everything okay, mom? I was like, good, support daughter. That's great. Is she not going to have any emotions about the fact that her parents are getting divorced? Yeah, that seems kind of weird. It feels weird that she would feel nothing about this at all. Like, she, like, the daughter in here only exists to support the mom. And it's very odd, like, she has zero character when this big life-changing event happens to her, and we never see it impact her at all. She's too busy studying at college. No, because we don't know what she, <laughs> We don't even know what We don't know what she's doing there. No, exactly. <laughs> That's the uh, joke. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, so she has no personality at all in this. But after that, after she wrecks the, like, she has so little connection to the dad. At, when she wrecks the wedding, when she wrecks, like, the wedding, and the daughter's there, like, Mom, what are you doing? I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot that you were Herod's daughter. <laughs> I forgot you were related to that guy. Like, that is how little connection she has. And after this, Melissa McCarthy goes to her, and she says, yeah, and... She's like, I'm so sorry about that. It's like, yeah, well, you ruined dad's wedding, mom. And then she goes, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to quit college. No, mom, you can't do that at all. <laughs> and the person behind me who had been laughing at everything, I heard her lean over to her friend and go, she literally was just mad at her mom just five seconds ago. Like, and went, <laughs> even the people who were loving this film are calling it odds bullshit at this moment. <laughs> um, but okay. So this movie, 
it's got, oh God, another thing that makes no sense in here. She has like massive stage fright. She has a scene where she has to give an oral presentation in her class. She's like, oh, I thought it was going to be written. Oh no. And she goes up there to give the oral presentation and she like melts up there. Like it is one of the most disturbing transformations I've seen of someone like, <sighs> like I have crippling stage fright. Like I've mostly gotten over it largely thanks to this, I will admit. I've gotten used to like talking to larger crowds. However, there used to be a time in which like I would be sweating, I would be shaking, like it would be hard for me to concentrate. I would like, people would tell me they could see me getting paler. This is so exaggerated, even I have to call bullshit on it. <laughs> like because you are seeing like every time it cuts to her, she's sweating more, like the stains on her are getting bigger, like stains on her back are getting bigger. She goes up to someone's like, guy, can, can I just get some, can I just get some water? She goes up to someone in the front row and it's like, the guy doesn't want to give her the water. He's like, don't be a dick, give me the water. And she's like fighting the guy. She chugs the entire thing down and goes, oh, oh God, that's not sitting well. And it's like, this is the most, and again, like every single joke in here, it goes on forever. I was like, this is one of the most uncomfortable scenes I've seen in a comedy in years mm. with how long it's holding on this. But a couple of minutes before this in the movie, she had a giant dance battle in front of all these other people. Uh, she had a dance battle against the mean girl and she was like doing the worm in front of all of them. And I was like, Okay, I know it's not quite the same thing, but it's really close to each other. Yeah, it's like, those are like really exaggerated. Like, like it's one thing if you're like kind of nervous about talking and then like being able to like dance, but it's like going so far as to like yeah. having that much of a meltdown compared to like being able to like dance in front of you. That is like such a huge... Huge shift, yep. Uh, exactly what I was thinking. And it's like... Both of them are so cartoonish on both spectrums that's like, I can't even buy you as a human being mm. anymore in all honesty. Like, I've never seen anyone, like, I've seen people pass out from stage fright before. Like, I've seen clips of people doing that. Even they held it together way better than she was holding it together here. I was like, man, yeah, I, just, I get that this is a silly comedy, but you've exaggerated to the point in which I can't believe you're human. Like, that is too freaking much. But, and as I mentioned, she had a dance bell. There's the mean girl at this school. <laughs> of course. Of course. And man, I don't know. Maybe it's different for everybody out there. Maybe it's probably especially different for girls out there. Because I know that you deal with stuff that, you know, men never even can comprehend and men don't have to go through. But man, I remember what it was like in college. A lot of the bullshit from high school kind of got left behind. Yeah, exactly. And if it's it was like, like freshman year, yeah, in my freshman year in college, there were still like people with those chips on their shoulders. There were still people kind of being assholes to each other. But they're all seniors in this film. By that point, seniors, like, listen, if you don't want to deal with someone, you're just like, yeah, that's nice. And then you just stop talking to them. Mm -hmm. No one is the bitchy asshole as a senior in college. It, like, I had... Almost every class I had in college, there was a mom in there. There was a parent in there. There was someone going back to get their degree. No one ever gave them shit. It's, again, I'm sure it happens to some people out there. I'm sure it's different at different schools. I'm sure it's different, especially for women compared to like men. But yeah, man, I just never saw that shit. Uh, so it was so much like, you're writing this college like a high school. Yeah, it's like, like even when I went to college, like no one really gave me shit. So it's like... <sighs> yeah. Uh, okay, but this thing ends with... She now has to raise $12,000 to be able to pay for the rest of her tuition. So they decide to hold a big party and charge everybody 20 bucks to get in. And no one shows up and they just go, yeah, they're probably all at the Christina Aguilera concert. And they go, okay, I have an idea. And Coma Girl tweets out, Christina Aguilera will be at this party after her, after her concert. And then the place is packed. And everyone's like, yeah, I love Christina. When's Christina getting here? Christina, she's the voice of a generation. These are all literally lines that people are saying here. I was like, <laughs> I'm a 30 year old grown ass man. Yeah, like, is even this... I know no college student gives a shit about Christina Aguilera. Like, if this took place in like the 90s when she yes. was like at the height of her popularity, that I would make give... way more sense. I like... will give you even <laughs> all the way up to like 2008. I will give you that far. This is a fucking decade past when this joke would actually work. <laughs> and I mean, there are people like, I love Christina. Like people saying she's the voice of a generation. It's like, yeah, not yours. <laughs> Man, that is, and you know instantly, okay, this ends with Christina Aguilera showing up because she's way too specific of a name mm. to go for. And there's way too much praise being thrown around for her. 
you know this thing ends with them getting Christina Aguilera into this movie. And they are, and then they're starting to get worried. It's like, oh my goodness, okay, what happens if they don't show up? Okay, oh, we're gonna have to tell them the truth about this. And they bring up, like, how did you get that many people here with just a tweet? And then she goes, I'm Coma Girl. I have three million subscribers. I'm a medical marvel. And I was like, name me one goddamn person on this planet who followed someone just because they were in a coma. Name me. A, any medical marvel. I'll give you anything like that. And also, medical marvel because you were in a coma for eight years? Medical marvel is, this is the only time this has happened. People wake up from comas. It's happened. It's, there's several people out there who have woken up from long ass comas. I read about it in the news, and then I go on with my life. I don't follow them on Twitter. Who the fuck follows someone all because they were in a coma? And if you have three million goddamn subscribers, and you are on a college campus, wouldn't you eventually have people going up to you like, oh my god, are you this person? And there is one scene at the frat party where someone goes up and goes, hey, I'm sorry, are you coma girl? It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't talk to fans. It's like, oh, I'm not a fan. I mean, I follow you on Twitter. So they do set it up. I'll give them that. But three million subscribers? Dear God, I don't even have 2,000 subscribers. I have like 25,000 YouTube subscribers. I get one person per party that I go to that goes into me like, hey, are you a professional? Three? Hey, man, I like your stuff. Cool. And like, that's it. It's like, she's getting treated on this college campus the way I get treated on college campuses. <laughs> and it's like, you shouldn't you be getting like 20 times that much amount? Like even like, shouldn't you be getting like a hundred times this amount of attention in here if you're that popular? Yeah, like seriously. Like there are like YouTubers who like have to like, like wear disguises and stuff or like tr or like move to different areas. Doesn't like fucking Markiplier have three million subscribers? Yeah, exactly. Drop I mean, that like motherfucker <laughs> in the middle of a college campus and see if he makes it from one end to the other without people mobbing him. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, seriously, you guys have like no concept so, of like what what popularity is the online. The fucking like, Game Grumps don't even have three million subscribers, <laughs> and they would be just mobbed walking mm -hmm. down the street. It's insane to think that that is part of this plot. And then at the end of this, it turns out that Melissa McCarthy's goth roommate, dorm mate who, like, that's a joke, like the teacher of her class, it's a joke that they go to whenever they feel like going to it. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, fuck, I forgot you were in this movie, fine, whatever. Uh, at the end of it, she just shows up and goes, hey, so because you're my best friend, I saw your tweet and I decided to help you out. Uh, this is my cousin, Christina Aguilera. Hey everyone, I heard about everything that you're doing and you're trying to tell us at the school and it's really good to see girls coming together and supporting each other. Let's all get on stage and sing and they all go to a big musical number. And that's how the movie ends. Of course it ends with a giant musical number. <laughs> it's fucking like all that shit that you hear about like Despicable Me and all those Illumination movies where they always end with the musical numbers. At least some of them will set up a fucking musical number is coming. At least some of them will mention like- At least they're cartoons so they like have an so excuse if you break for like a musical. If you break fucking physics, it's a cartoon. We're willing to buy it. This thing, god damn, <laughs> man. It is so, they had nothing in this movie. I want to see the script for this film because it cannot exist. This has to be nothing but just them making up ideas for scenes as they went along. The script for this thing has to just be ideas written in like numbered font, like one scene, two scene, three scene, four. Like the script for this thing has to be like one page and it's just like bullet points of things they're going to do in this movie. <laughs> it is so fucking insulting, this film. I could not stand this. It's not the worst thing that I've seen. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't tempted to leave at any point. I can say that. I've been in worse movies in which I was like, I want to go so bad. Here I was like, just get it over with. Just go already. Just go with the scene. Why won't you go? But I didn't get that urge to get up and walk out of there. Uh, so I'll give it that. <laughs> it's bad, but it's not full-blown torture. I can say that at least. Although there are times, there are times in which I was like, oh God, like it's, it's not as bad as the Fifty Shades movie that I saw just a couple of, like, I can already go ahead and say, no way is this not going to be on my worst of the year list, but it's already not even the number one spot. Mm -hmm. I have already seen worse this year. Although, by the way, 
I saw a trailer at the front of this movie. Apparently it comes out like next week. I didn't even know about this film. It's called Book Club. It's about a book club that forms around the Fifty Shades books. Oh. But it actually kind of looks charming. Mm -hmm. I actually am kind of like intrigued. Like, you know, this kind of looks like it might be kind of fun. It's, I mean, it looks dumb, but you know, at this point I'm kind of on a sliding scale of what he's done. <laughs> uh, by comparison. It was uh, like, man, if there's like one member of that book club who just like shits all over the seat, all, all over the books, I'd be like, oh, I would totally watch that. Like, <laughs> well, it's all like, it's also like, man, I also kind of like support anytime that you see like older actresses like getting jobs, and it's all like older actresses in here. Like, Candace Bergen is in here. I was like, good for fucking Candace Bergen showing up in a movie. Way to go. Uh, also, like, Jane Fonda is in here, and fuck, Jane Fonda still looks good for her age. <laughs> um, I don't know why I threw that out there. Anywho, <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it's. This is what I hate about Melissa McCarthy movies. It's that it's so much of just her improving, and it's not improving jokes. It's just improving words mm -hmm. and that just go on and on. And there's really like no concept behind like what they're doing. Like I hate Adam Sandler films, but I'll at least give them this. At least the plot continues to move in an Adam Sandler film. Uh, but yeah, Melissa McCarthy has gotten to that point in which like, listen, these make money, but do you want to keep making that money? Like, do you want this to just keep being what you're doing? But she does have a movie coming out called Can You Ever Forgive Me? And it looks kind of like an Oscar push kind of a movie. But it looks really damn good. Like, it's about her being a struggling author and she can't pay her rent because no one wants to buy her books. But she sells an old letter she had from another author and they pay her like 75 bucks for it. And you go, yeah, I pay you way more except this is just kind of like bland content on here. So she goes home and she starts forging letters from famous authors. And that's how she starts making a bit in a living. And I'm like, that looks fucking good. And she's acting in this. She's not improv and she's reading actual lines of dialogue that were in. And it looks like she's doing a good job. So I can't wait for that. So I'm not coming in here with like any kind of like prejudice against like Melissa McCarthy. I have no chip on my shoulder for that. But these movies are just fucking bad. They're terrible. And this is coming out Mother's Day weekend. And my mom loves Melissa McCarthy movies. Oh. But like, <laughs> I don't know if she saw The Boss, which was her last movie. But she saw, uh... Tammy, which was her movie before that. And I was like, yeah, well, these are the type of movie my mom likes, so she'll enjoy that. My mom came out of that and went, that movie was awful. <laughs> I went, oh, wow. Oh. Wow. So, yeah, I again, people were laughing in there, but, you know, ever since my mom told me that, I'm like, I don't even know if I can recommend this to the people <laughs> who I recommend these movies to. Uh, but, yeah, it's bad. I, I'm not going to do a mini review on this. Uh, cause I honestly don't think anybody would care, <laughs> but if I had to give this a score, this is a two out of 10. It is that low. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Maybe a 2.5. I'll bump it up to 2.5 cause it's good to see Jillian Jacobs again work. Um, and Chris Parnell, good for him for being in a movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, 2.5 out of 10. That is the best I can do. Mm. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. I got one more movie I'm reviewing this weekend and it's also been getting bad reviews. But wow, I am so looking forward to anything after this. Thank you guys. Come back for that one. Bye. Bye.